Hello and welcome to another video from Between CAD Classes. Today we're going to do a little bit of part modeling in AutoCAD. Here you can see the part that we're going to create and let's take a quick look at the workflow that we're going to go through for this one. First I'm going to begin by creating the base feature including the little notched cutout here. Then I will create the back feature with the filleted corner. Then I will add in the rectangular shape with the half circle cutout. Then I will add in the triangular extruded feature as well. And then finally, I will union all these together so that they are one solid part. Let's get started by creating the base feature. The first thing I'm going to do in AutoCAD is set up my working environment. I'm going to begin by switching to my 3D modeling workspace. One of the things that I want to make sure is turned on, at least initially, is my dynamic user coordinate system. I can see that button is turned on right here. If you do not see the dynamic user coordinate system icon on your status bar, you can select the customization button in the lower right corner of the status bar and turn on dynamic UCS there. Let's take a look at the detail drawing real quick so we can get the dimensions of the base feature. It's 96 by 64. So I'll begin by drawing that rectangular shape. I'll just simply start my rectangle command. I'm going to start this one at 0 comma 0 so it lines up with my axes. And using my relative coordinates, I'm going to type in at 96 comma 64 and enter to get a 96 by 64 rectangle here. Then I want to create this notch to feature. So once again, looking at our detail drawing, we can see that the notched feature has a radius of 8 and it is 32 millimeters from the front of the part and 20 millimeters from the right side of the part. So using that information back here in AutoCAD, I want to create some offset lines. So I'm going to actually explode my polyline here and I'll join it back together when I'm ready to create my solid parts. So I'm just going to simply select that and type X and enter to explode it. You can also click the modify drop down and choose explode here. Now using my offset command here in the modify panel, I will begin by putting in a value of 32 and enter and I'll offset this line to the back of the part 32. I'll restart the offset command and this time put in a value of 20 and enter and offset this line to the left 20. Then I can go ahead and draw a circle at the intersection there with a radius of 8. Now I can go ahead and draw in two lines from the intersections straight to the right, erase my offset construction lines, and then I'll come in with my trim command, which you can find in the modify panel or you can type TR for trim, and I'll trim out the arc and the line there. Now there's two ways to create a solid part. I could either use the press pull command or I could use the extrude command. The nice thing about the press pull command is you don't have to join your sketch into one shape, but it does leave the sketch lines behind. For that reason, I like to use the extrude command, but that means I have to join everything into a polyline first. So I'm going to choose the modify drop down and the join command, or I can use J and enter at the keyboard. I'll select all of my lines and enter and you can see that it's now one shape. I'm going to orbit my screen by holding the shift key and pressing down my mouse wheel a little bit to get that into a 3D view and then I am going to extrude it. So I'll extrude, select the shape, enter and then I will put in the thickness. Looking at my detail drawing it is a thickness of 16 so back here in AutoCAD, what's important is noticing the positive direction of Z. So I want this to go up, so it will be a positive 16. I'll put in 16 and enter, and I now have my first solid shape here. Currently it's in wireframe. So here on the view panel, I'm going to switch from 2D wireframe to shaded with edges. So I can see a solid version of that. That takes care of the first feature. So next, looking at the detail drawing again, I want to create this shape on the left side of the part. You can see that it is 64 from the bottom and it is 64 wide to match the entire part. We also see that it has a rounded corner with a radius of 48. 
And finally, we can see that it's going to be extruded a thickness of 16. So back in AutoCAD, I'm going to rotate around to see the back of the part. So I'll hold the shift key and press my mouse wheel down and pan around to see that. And I want to create the sketch over here. And this is where the dynamic UCS comes into play. If I start my line command here, I can highlight this surface and snap to the endpoint. With dynamic UCS on, it's going to make this plane my sketch plane. Now I can continue drawing my shape from there. So I'm going to go straight up 64, back to the right 64, down from there 64, and then I'll just choose the close option in my command line. Now I have my rectangular shape, and I'm going to add in that fillet with a radius of 48. So I'll choose my fillet command, enter in a radius, so I'll select radius in the command line and then 48 and enter. And then I will select the two lines to round that shape. Once again, I am going to be using the extrude command. So this needs to be one solid shape. So I will just window around all the sketch geometry here, then type J and enter to join those into one polyline. Now I'm ready to extrude. I'll choose extrude and then the shape and enter. And looking at my Z direction, positive is going to go into the part, which is what I want. So I'll type in a positive 16 and enter. And I can see I now have my second feature there. Now currently it's two separate parts. I could go ahead and join these together. I'm going to wait until the very end to join these together. So next I'm going to create the rectangular feature with the circular cutout. So taking a look at the detail drawing, we can see that the rectangular shape is 40 millimeters wide by 28 millimeters tall. And then it has a circular cutout centered on the top edge with a radius of 12. Then I can see from the top view here that it is going to extrude 42 millimeters. So switching back to AutoCAD here, I'm gonna rotate my screen around so I can see the shape from this side. Using my dynamic UCS feature, if I start a line or a polyline here, I can pick up this plane, but it will not pick up this point here because there's not actually a corner there. It's just where two solids interfere. So with that in mind, I am going to go ahead and union these two parts together now. So here in the solid editing panel, I'll select the union tool. Then I will select the two shapes and press enter and you can see that it is now one selectable solid. That will allow me to pick that edge now. So once again, I'll start the line or the polyline, make sure this surface is highlighted and then snap to that point. And then I can go ahead and draw in my shape. So it was going to be 40 wide, then it was going to be 28 tall. So back to the right 40, and then I will click close in the command line to create the rectangular shape there. Next, I want to put in my circular shape. So when I come in with my circle this time, I can snap to the midpoint, but you can see that it is drawing it at the wrong direction. And that's because it's trying to match my current UCS, this XY plane out here. This is one of the limitations of the dynamic UCS. It works great when you're sketching on the edge of a surface, but when you're out here on a sketch, it doesn't work so well. So here I'm going to go ahead and change my UCS to this surface. So I will come to my coordinates panel and select my three point UCS tool. My first click is going to be my new origin point. So I'm going to click the bottom left corner of this surface. My second click is going to be a point in the X direction. So I'll pick the corner down here on the side of the part. Then I'll specify my Y direction. So I'll click a point going straight up from that original point. And now you can see my XY plane is actually on that surface. So this will now allow me to go ahead and draw my circle at that midpoint. And once again, I can put in a radius of 12 for this one. So once more, I need to create a closed shape so that I can extrude it. So I will use my trim command and trim out the portions of this shape that I don't need. 
Then I will select all the sketch geometry for this shape and type J and enter for join. And that will give me a solid shape here. Then I'm ready to extrude it. So I'll select the extrude command, select my shape and enter. And once again, taking a look at my UCS icon, Z in the positive direction is coming out of the part. So I'm going to need to put in a negative extrusion value. That depth when we looked at our drawing was 42. So I'll enter a negative 42 and enter to create my extruded shape there. Finally, I want to create the triangular shape here so I can leave my UCS as it is. I'll go ahead and draw my line. Since dynamic UCS is on, I want to make sure I'll snap while this surface is highlighted. Then I can click the three points to create my triangle. Of course, if I would have used the polyline, I wouldn't need to join them. But since I drew it with lines, I'll select the three lines and J and enter to make a solid shape. Then I will extrude one last time and select the shape. Once again, Z is coming out. As I consult my original drawing, the depth of this feature is 12. So I'm going to put this in as negative 12 so that it goes into the part. I can return my UCS to the original by selecting the world coordinate system here in the coordinates panel. Then I can rotate my screen around and I'll just go ahead and click the isometric corner of the view cube here to get a nice isometric view of that. Then the last thing that I want to do is make sure I union this so that it's all one solid part. So I'll select my union tool, then select all my shapes and press enter to make one final solid shape there. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please subscribe because I will be continuing to post more AutoCAD 3D tutorials. Thanks for watching.